My name is Pastor Stephen Feinstein. I'm a pastor at Sovereign Way Christian Church in Hesperia, California. And I'm making this video with regard to resolution number nine that was presented at the Southern Baptist Convention 2019. I am the original author of resolution nine and I've made my original submission public. And the reason I've done that is because the, the final draft that was presented to the messengers yesterday at the convention was radically different than what I submitted to the Committee on Resolutions. Now they have the right to alter resolutions as they see fit and they did so. And so many of the people who were objecting to the form of the resolution that was approved and voted on yesterday have looked at what I originally submitted and they find general broad agreement with it. And so the question is where, where do I stand on this now? Am I upset that the Committee on Resolutions altered my resolution to such a point. And I'll tell you, I've had to think a lot about this. And when I've seen the, the absolute explosion that seems to have happened on social media over this, at first I was grieved. The whole reason I submitted this resolution is I wanted to solve a problem. It seemed that uh, critical race theory and intersectionality were seeping into churches, seeping into Bible colleges, and seeping into even seminaries. Um, at least that's the accusations that were being made. And so what I wanted to do was get a resolution out there to where the, the denomination of the Southern Baptists themselves would make a statement against critical race theory and intersectionality. Instead, what we got was a statement that affirmed that we are one in Adam, and in a sense we are, we are the Imago Dei, um, so we, we are not so divided, instead we share a common humanity, and then more so in Christ, this is where our fundamental unity is found, as will be displayed in the new heavens and the new earth. You know, there's no Greek nor Jew, um, we're all one in Christ. So the statement affirmed that, that's what they kept from my original resolution. What was different is in my original proposal, or it's not really a proposal, but in my original submitted resolution, uh, I was wanting critical race theory and intersectionality in its totality denounced because we all know that its origins are Marxist. Um, it's really being used as a disruptor to divide humanity and it will do so in the church if it's allowed to come in. The resolution committee took a much narrower view of these terms and instead of seeing the ideology uh, as a whole, they were more specifically looking at the analytical tools uh, that can stem from this. And so the debate is, should Christians use something, even, even a tool that might be able to articulate truth from general revelation, should Christians use it when the origins are clearly from secular, atheistic, materialistic Marxism? That's really what the debate was, was all about. At least that's what it looked like to me. And when I read the final product a lot closer, I wasn't as upset as you might think I would be that they made these alterations. And I'm just going to be honest with you. I thought I knew a lot about critical race theory and intersectionality. And I think I do, but there are people out there who've studied it a lot more in depth than I have. And I believe some of the people on that resolution, resolution committee did. And so when I read what they put, I feel they were very careful in how they articulated things. And what do I mean by that? Well, specifically, they made it clear that the scripture is supreme, okay? Sola Scriptura. They said that, that any any positive use of these tools that come from these ideologies is in subordination to scripture, which means any conclusion that comes from critical race theory or intersectionality that contradicts what is in the Bible is to automatically be repudiated. So in that sense, I, I feel like they put up a wall that made it to where it would be unjustified if you see the nonsensical stuff that's being said in the regular universities, it, it, would, it would be rejected, or at least it should be, if it's found in our churches or in our seminaries. For example, if we are trying to declare the gospel to a homosexual and they say, well, no, you can't do that. All you're doing is promoting heterosexual privilege and therefore I'm to take at suspicion everything you say. No, that's nonsense. That's utter nonsense. And I believe that the way the resolution is framed makes it to where you could call that what it is, nonsense. 
So the question at hand, I think everybody here would agree that there are true insights from general revelation okay, that are accessible to those who are not redeemed. Uh, we could look at the sciences. Most scientists today are operating off of uh, naturalism, materialism, and yet they discover true things, things that, that are useful to us. Um, so can we take insights from critical race theory and intersectionality and use them in subordination of the scriptures? My gut and my hunch would say no, but I thought about it a little bit. And, and so let me give you an example. Let's say I moved to Iran. Okay, well, I'm ethnically Jewish. I'm a Christian by faith, and I'd be an immigrant there that does not speak Arabic. Those are four different things that intersect in that society that put me at a big disadvantage and quite honestly would put a target on my back. So would it be fair to use the analysis I just used, even though it sounds like intersectionality, would it be fair to use that? I think it absolutely would be. It doesn't contradict anything in the scriptures. Um, and now, if I took that to say, therefore, we need to rebel against the Iranian government and, and the oppressed are to become the new oppressors, well, then obviously at that point, that would be, that would be absolutely wrong. And so when I was looking at this and when I was thinking about it, to me, it seems like it would be possible and appropriate to use it as an analytical tool as long as it is in subordination to the scriptures. You might disagree with me. You might think like, man, they, they radically altered your resolution. You should be upset at them. But honestly, when I look at it, I think what they did is they put something together a little more uh, carefully crafted than what I was able to put together. When I think about it, I mean, if you look at some of the Proverbs, it would seem that there is some correlation between some of the Proverbs and um, some Egyptian Proverbs, a, a menope. Um, when you look at Paul, when he's preaching in Athens, he quotes Epimen Epimenides and um, Aratus. And, he's, and what he's quoting, they attributed to Zeus. But Paul was able to see that although that this isn't true of Zeus, this is true of Yahweh. And so he appropriated it while rejecting the pagan worldview itself. He was able to appropriate the truth, though, about God and use it in his sermon. And so seeing that, that Solomon in Proverbs was able to see that, yeah, the Egyptians live in the same world we do, even though they're pagan, there are some insights into wisdom philosophy that they have got right. And so Solomon was able to take it and modify it in a form that is appropriate and, and glorifies Yahweh. And we see that Paul did the same. I think it's very possible on a very limited level to use some of the insights from intersectionality uh, in, a, in a way that does not contradict the scripture. Now, obviously, the scripture has its own categories to deal with these things. So if we use my Iran example, again, we could say, well, you're supposed to treat the, the foreigner uh, correctly. You're not supposed to oppress them. And, and so, yeah, the Bible does speak to all those issues, but it never directly shows how multiple intersections could lead to even a bigger um, problem for somebody in any given society. So in that sense, I, I don't have a problem with that. You know, I, I'm a certified ACBC biblical counselor, right? I, I think psychology, um, in, in terms of its prescriptions, is by and large useless. It's, it's opposite to the scripture. But as the psychologists study people who, let's say, are struggling with grief, their observations of people who are struggling with grief are accurate and they can be helpful. It's just their solutions and their prescriptions that, that are wrong. I see the, the critical race theory and I see the intersectionality in the same light. I, I pray that you guys would be gracious towards me on that. I don't think that um, Marxism should be allowed as a worldview in, in the church or in our seminaries. But if the Ret Committee on Resolutions meant to define only the analytic tools to keep it very narrow then you know what? I think they actually did a good job. And the fact that they specified it has to be subordinate to Scripture, let me tell you what that means. Because a lot of you guys who are upset at Resolution 9 as it was voted on, I want you to think about this. If any Southern Baptist institution or organization is going to use critical race theory or intersectionality to promote this oppressed versus oppressor nonsense and to divide people in the body of Christ, to hinder our unity, that resolution said 
that any use of it has to be subordinate to the scripture. Hold them accountable. Take them to task. Say, this resolution said you can't use this garbage if it contradicts the scripture. However, where it is useful and it is in submission to scripture, like the example that, that I gave about me going to Iran, then by all means, use it. So let's say some of the rumors out there about some of the seminaries are true. If you find that rhetoric there, call it out. You could actually cite this resolution as you call it out. In that sense, I think this actually puts us in a better position to go after the people who are trying to smuggle communist Marxism into the Southern Baptist Convention. That's personally how I see it. Maybe I'm an optimist. Maybe I'm turning it into uh, a positive when there really isn't a positive here. But I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. You know, I, I think for those of you who are absolutely opposed to what's in Resolution 9, I hope that by reading my original submission, you realize I'm with you guys. I'm on your side. We've got the same theology. The only difference is, as I looked closely at what was produced, like some others who have done so, I don't think it's as bad. I don't think there is as much alarm necessary as has been out there. Honestly, I think we should use this to go after those who are not using these theories in subordination to Scripture. As they contradict Scripture, we've now got a green light to call them out and try to root them out of our convention. And I pray that's what will happen with this. Uh, hopefully, um, this charitable, I, I mean this all in grace, and I pray that I'll, I'll get the grace in return. Um, you guys are my brothers. We're in this together. And let's just uh, keep on keeping on for the purity of the gospel. Thank you.